Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Today, inshallah, we will discuss the single phase induction motor. Up till now, in our course, we discussed the three phase synchronous machine. We discussed three phase induction machine, DC machines, and started in the special machines. We discussed the universal motor. Uh, up till now, uh, we didn't discuss any uh, single phase motor, either the universal one. Universal motor can be supplied by DC source as series DC motor or by single phase AC supply. So what is the difference between single phase induction motor and other motors? How a single phase motor is working? Uh, what is the mathematical model of this motor? This is what we are going to describe today, inshallah. So the objectives of uh, today's class is to discuss the construction of single phase induction motor, operation of single phase induction motor, theory of double rotating field, what is the meaning of double rotating field, we will discuss it in detail, equivalent circuit of single phase induction motor, the power flow of uh, single phase induction motor, the parameter determination of the single phase induction uh, motor by means of something called no load and the blocked rotor test. Uh, it's uh, something like open circuit and short circuit test for transformer. We are going to make this test in order to determine the motor parameters. So this is our objectives in our class today. As an introduction for single phase motors, single phase motors are small and mostly used with fractional horsepower or low power machines. Because as we described before, we use three phase for high power machines. So, if the power is, is higher than four horsepower or more, we uh, can switch to three phase because the high power will not be available for this single phase machine. So we can find single phase motors for small horsepower only. Also the performance of single phase motors is different a bit compared to three phase in terms of efficiency, in terms of uh, cover losses in terms of uh, torque values and torque rebels and so on. For instance, you can find single phase induction motor with efficiency of 50 to 60 percent maximum. However, in three phase induction motor, you can find motor efficiency reach to 90 something, 95, 96 percent. But in single phase, it's impossible to find uh, a motor with high efficiency. So for single phase motors, we can find some types of, of machines like single phase induction motor. And this is what we are going to discuss today. As we described, the majority of fractional horsepower motors are of the induction type. Why? We will compare when we see the other types of single phase motors. They are classified according to the methods used to start them. We will describe now the uh, starting of single phase induction motor. And it's not self start like three phase induction motor. We need something to make starting for the machine. Uh, like for example, uh, split phase, like uh, capacitor. Uh, and so the motor name or named by this method of starting, like split phase, like capacitor start, like capacitor run or shaded bull machine. So you may not find someone say in the market single phase induction mode. However, you can find someone say uh, split phase induction mode or capacitor start or capacitor run mode or shaded bull mode. So these are the uh, most familiar names of the single phase induction motor and they named it according to the technique of start. We have also single phase synchronous motor. For single phase synchronous motor, 
It runs at constant speed, like the three phase synchronous motor, and are used in applications such as clocks and uh, turntables where, where constant speed is required. So for all of the applications that need uh, constant speed, we can use a synchronous motor. We have uh, two types of single phase synchronous motor, which are commonly used, uh, like reluctance type or stresses type. So these are the most uh, used synchronous motors or single phase synchronous motors in industry. However, the brief for synchronous motor, it's working with constant speed. So if the application is for constant speed, you can work with single phase synchronous motor. However, you have taken consideration that you need two supplies, one supply for AC and one DC for the field excitation. Also, we have single phase series motor or universal motor, which has been described in the last uh, class. And as we discussed, universal motor is preferred for high starting torque machines. So, as we can see, for low starting torque machines and for control or, or variable speed with single AC supply, it's better to use single phase induction. So, this is the majority. Uh, this is why the majority of fractional horsepower are using single phase induction. You can find it in uh, home appliances like fans uh, and uh, compressors. Simply, the single phase induction motor, induction tire, have uh, cage rotors, like the squirrel cage three phase one, and a single phase distributed stator winding. So we have stator winding, a single phase, and these uh, windings are uh, wounded on the rotor slots in a way we will describe, inshallah. Such a motor inherently doesn't develop any starting torque. So in the beginning of the motion, when you connect this motor to supply, the machine will not start moving. It will oscillate and it needs something to start this motor. So if you move the rotor by your hand in one direction, the machine will start in this direction and it will rotate. However, without any external help, the machine will not start. So, still here, however, if the rotor is given a spin or started by auxiliary means, it will continue to run. We are going to describe now how it's going to uh, be started. So the construction, as you can see, we have the stator core. Can you see the cursor, Shabbat? Yes. Okay. So we have a stator core. This stator core is the same like the three phase one. However, it will be wounded using only single phase supply. And this core is uh, composed of lamination, as you can see. Here are the laminations, and it's connected together to make this uh, shape. And, and it's made by uh, laminations in order to reduce the eddy current loss in the uh, machine. This is to reduce the core losses of the machine. As you can see, here we have one stator uh, turn of the uh, winding, and we call it as main winding. And we have another kind of windings called auxiliary winding. So we have two different types of winding. We have main winding and auxiliary winding. Why you use auxiliary winding, we'll describe it in details now. For the rotor, we have the same kind of rotor of three phase machine. So it's rotor and we have bars either inside or like a cage in this shape. So we expect to have the same rotor of three phase machine, the same stator construction core, but the coils are uh, different. Let's assume now we have one coil, which is the main coil, and see the response of the machine. As you can see here in the left-hand side, 
This is the coil which was wound on the uh, stator core here. Okay, so this shape is here. This is the coil. When we supply this one term by AC source at a time of positive half cycle, for instance, the current will move in this direction and return back to the supply. And based on that, you will find a flux rotating here in this direction. And in the other direction, the flux is rotating in that way. So we have two pools, N and S. Yes, Shabab, is it clear? Yes. This is for the positive half cycle. For the negative half cycle, because the supply is AC, the polarity will be changed, as you can see. For that, in the rotor, the forces will be reflected, or, or sorry, reversed. This means, because of the high frequency of the supply, compared to the mechanical time constant, which is required to rotate the machine, you will find that the rotor is oscillating, uh, oscillating and it cannot be started. It needs something to make the flux of any direction to be higher than the other flux in order to start moving the machine. Once the machine is started, it will continue working in the same direction. However, we have only a problem in the starting. So what we are going to do is to add, for instance, we are going to add auxiliary winding, like what we have seen here. We have two windings, main and auxiliary. And as you can see, there is a phase shift of 90 degrees between the main and the auxiliary winding. This phase shift, like what we have here, so this is the main winding, and that is the auxiliary winding. In this shape, the, the main winding flux is appeared, which is going to make a flux in this direction. The resultant flux will be in this direction. However, if the flux or, or, or if the, val the value of the current start decreasing and return to the negative cycle, the vector will be reversed on the other side. So this is only not sufficient. So we added another coil here, which is the uh, auxiliary coil, which is the yellow one. And this yellow one is going to make a, a flux. And the resultant flux of both of coils will make a rotating vector. So here we have the uh, yellow vector, which is the flux due to main uh, coil. So the, the main coil is in, uh, in, in yellow color, okay? And the auxiliary coil, which is connected to a capacitor here, is the auxiliary one. So here, the main winding is energized. And here, the auxiliary winding is energized. So you can find here a vector for the flux appearing with a value here. This is a positive half cycle. And when the supply is reversed, it will be reversed in the other direction. So it's going to be moved here and there. So the resultant vector will be zero for each winding. However, because there is a shift between the two windings by 90 degrees, all of time you will find the green vector, which is the uh, sum or result, resultant vector of the two fluxes. It will appear and rotate in a complete cycle. So by adding two coils in that configuration by 90 phase shift degree, 90 degrees phase shift, we can get a resultant flux, and this flux is moving for the 360 degrees. So this is the way to make rotating flux for the machine. So in order to do that, we need two coils with the help of capacitor or without. So one coil is not sufficient to be, uh, to, to start the machine. However, if the machine 
uh, is started, you can disconnect the auxiliary winding and operate the machine only using the, uh, the main winding. So we will describe all of the uh, characteristics and the performance of the machine at steady state while considering we have only one main winding, not two windings. So we need only two windings at the starting instant. Inshallah, next lecture, we will discuss all of the types of starting and you will uh, yani, get the uh, idea how the coil can start and then remove after the motor uh, start. Okay, so for now, we need to understand what is the double rotating field theory. We said the main winding itself, it cannot start as a machine. We need to understand why this happened, and this will be described by this theory. This theory said the operation of single phase induction motor can be explained and analyzed by double revolving field theory. What happened? First, consider that the rotor is stationary, so no motion in the motor, and the state winding is connected to single phase supply. Mathematically, for a sinusoidal distributed state of winding, the EMF MMF along with the position theta will be calculated as a single phase supply. So it's Ni cosine theta. For N, where N is the number of turns per state of winding. When we need to calculate the MMF of the machine, we have to multiply the flux by the MMF by current in order to get the uh, magnetomotive force. So Ni cosine theta has to be multiplied by uh, as a function of t has to be multiplied by cosine omega t. So we need to calculate the uh, resultant vector of these two functions cosine theta and the cosine omega t for the AC current. So we substitute the verb I as a small letter, it means instantaneous current, and the current relation is I maximum cosine on T. So this is the MMF, uh, which is the uh, N multiplied by I as a function of theta and time. Now we need to uh, find the, or uh, replace cosine theta, cosine omega T mathematically. We can find that we have cosine omega T minus theta and the cosine omega T plus theta and each multiplied by the same magnitude n, i maximum by two. So as you can see here, we have omega t minus theta, and here we have omega t plus theta. This means we have two components for MMF and two components for flux. These two components, we call it as forward, and backward flux. So we have forward flux and backward flux. One is rotating in a direction and the other rotating in the other or opposite direction. Simply assume at the time, at any time, any instant time at T1, and the vectors of flux starting be on the same direction and the resultant vector now will be the sum of these two vectors. So if the vector has length O P, the other one will have the same magnitude O P, because as you can see here in the relation, the maximum value is the same in I maximum divide two. So this will be represented by a vector O P. So at that instant, because both of vectors are in phase, the resultant vector will be the sum of these two vectors. However, at another instant T2, when the vector starts rotating, as you can see, this forward is moving in that direction, and the backward flux is moving in the opposite direction. So the resultant flux here will be the vector, which can be represented like that.
So this is the resultant vector, which is OR. So as you can see, compared OR with the other uh, or previous instant, you can find here it's higher than the value of the vector here. So the magnitude of vector now is reducing. In another time or another instant at t equal t3 for instance, when the two vectors are opposite to each other. So we expect the resultant vector as zero, is it right? So the magnitude of the vector now reduced from 2b to this value to zero. And then by rotating the forward and backward the fluxes again, you will find that the vector will be reversed on the other direction up till being maximum value on the opposite direction. This means we have two components of fluxes and two characteristics for the motor. One in the forward direction, which will be represented in this characteristic in dash line. And the other one is reverse characteristic, which is backward. It's simply like reverse motor operation, which can be represented in this dash line. And the resultant vector or resultant characteristic will be in this bold line. So as you can see in the bold line, at the instant of starting, the resultant torque equal to zero. This means the machine cannot start. So we have two components of fluxes, two components of torques, but the resultant torque at starting equal to zero. So simply in the starting, if you could find a method to increase the flux or torque for the forward here, or from the backward in the other side, it will mean that you have extra component in torque in one of the directions. And based on that, the machine can start and working in the higher torque. So if you start to rotate the machine in clockwise by your hand, the machine will continue working in clockwise direction. However, if you make a spin to the motor in the counterclockwise, the machine will start rotating in the counterclockwise. So we have only a problem at the instant of starting. So this is the problem of the uh, single phase induction motor. In order to drive the equivalent circuit, we have to consider the two components of fluxes. We have forward flux, which is moving with the speed due to uh, uh, synchronous speed in S in a direction of the forward. Let's assume the forward direction is in clockwise. So you will find the sled for the forward operation equal to NS synchronous speed minus the rotor speed when the motor starts running divided by NS, which is the normal relation for sled which is well known for three phase induction motor. However, for the backward sled, you have NS minus, minus NR. Why? If we consider NS in the same direction of the uh, supply speed, so the motor direction will be reversed for the backward flux, which means we have NR, NS minus minus NR, which is NS plus NR. NS plus NR divided by NS. So simply in this relation, if you add NS and subtract NS, you will have a relation of two NS minus NS. It's the same. So you can say now NS minus NR divided NS, which is minus lead, and two will be get here. So the backward sled is equal to two minus S. So now we have two component of flux, two component of torques, and two different sleds. One sled 
is for forward operation and another slab for backward operation. So we expect to have two different uh, fluxes and two different circuits because a part of the circuit will be uh, applied to the forward flux and another part will be applied to the reverse flux. So we expect to have EMF as forward EMF and another backward EMF. And this will be applied to the rotor circuit. So similarly, if we apply to the rotor circuit for the forward flux, you will have R2 divided S forward, which is S. But for the backward flux, R2 will be divided by the S backward, which is 2 minus S. So this is the equivalent circuit for the two halves of the coils. So simply, we can define the overall circuit as stator circuit, which has equivalent resistance R1, leakage reactance X1, and we have core, which will be also divided to two parts. One part is for the forward, which is XM divided by two, and another part is for backward, which is also XM divided by two. And for the rotor part, for the rotor coils, we have one half of the leakage inductance, or leakage reactance, sorry, and one half of the resistance in the forward, which is R2 prime divided by S. And it's connected in series with the other part, which is E backward here, which is applied to X, M divided by two, and we have also 0.5 X2 prime and 0.5 equivalent resistance for backward, which is R2 prime divided by two minus S. So this is now the equivalent circuit of the single phase induction motor at steady state. At steady state, which means the main coil is connected and the auxiliary coil is not exact in the circuit anymore. So we can simplify this circuit just mathematically by taking this branch in parallel with that branch. So we can get Z equivalent for forward impedance and we call it Z forward. So Z, Z forward, as you can see, Z forward equal to R forward plus Jx forward, which is equivalent to these two branches in parallel. So multiply these two branches divided by adding these two branches together. So this is the equivalent of the forward impedance. And the same also for backward impedance. So when we solve the problem of single phase, it's better to start calculating Z forward and Z backward in the beginning. This is to simplify the circuit and you can simply calculate the machine current. So this is the equivalent circuit after simplification by getting Z forward and Z backward. Regarding the power flow, now we have two different gap powers according to the forward flux and the backward flux. If you have a look to the circuit again, here, you will find that we have R2 divided S in the forward, which represent the gap power. But when we calculate the power, we can calculate it using the equivalent circuit here. So as you can see, the only resistance in this part of the rotor, which is R2 divided S, when we simplify this circuit, it will be converted to equivalent resistance, which is RF. So simply all of the power, which is going to move to the rotor, which is equivalent to the gap power, it should equal to I squared multiplied by RF. Take care 
this is a gap power, not copper losses. Because RF now represent all of power which is going to the rotor circuit in the forward part. So I1 square RF represent gap forward power. And I1 square R backward represent gap backward power. Right. In terms of power loss, Shabab, when we need to calculate the overall power of the machine, we have to add these two powers together. However, the machine is going to move with the effect of the difference between these two powers. Why? Because we have rotating flux in two directions, and it has resultant torque, one part in the forward and one part in the backward. So the resultant torque will be the difference between the two torques. So we can calculate torque forward as B gap forward divided by omega s, and torque backward as B gap backward divided by omega s. And the resultant torque will be torque forward minus torque backward. So simply, when you substitute the equations, it will be I1 squared multiplied by RF minus RB divided by omega s. So this is the resultant torque. Regarding the mechanical power, if we need to calculate the mechanical power, it's simply equal to torque multiplied by omega m, which is the rotor speed in radian per second. So you can calculate the omega m as a function of omega of synchronous speed as omega synchronous multiplied by one minus s. Also, you can substitute using the equation here. So when you multiply this torque by omega synchronous, which is torque multiplied by one minus s by omega synchronous, just substitute the relation of torque here, you will get the relation I1 squared RF minus RB multiplied by one minus S. It's the same relation in three phase induction motor, if you remember, I squared multiplied by resistance multiplied by one minus S. However, here the resistance is the difference between forward and backward resistance. So it's simply the mechanical power equal to B gap forward minus B gap back backward multiplied by one minus S. For that, we can say the difference between B gap forward and B gap backward will affect the load. So B output equal to B mechanical, which is this value minus rotational loss. In the other side, when we need to collect the power to the, rotor, to the stator side, we can consider the rotor capper loss as S B gap forward. The same like in induction motor, three phase induction mode. So this is for the capper loss on RF, sorry, in, in the forward uh, resistance. Take care of that. If you would like to calculate cover loss, you cannot say I square RF because RF is not the equivalent rotor resistance. RF is equivalent to all of the power resistance, the power, the gained power and loss power, the sum of the two components. So you cannot calculate the power loss using I square R forward. However, you can use this relation. B2 for B2 uh, as B2 means B cover two, B2 forward equal to S B gap forward, and B2 backward, which means cover loss on uh, rotor side, on reg regarding to the backward flux, equal to two minus S, which is S backward, multiplied by B, B gap backward. So as a total cover loss of the rotor, you can say B2, which is cover losses in rotor, equal to S B gap forward plus two minus S multiplied by B gap backward. So this is the resultant rotor cover loss. 
the total gap power in terms of uh, summation of the power in order to get the input power, we can get B gap equal to B gap forward plus B gap backward. So don't be confused. If you are going to calculate the power flow from the side of the supply in order to get input power, you have to add all of power together. So gap power has to be added to uh, forward and backward power has, has to be added together. However, if you would like to get the output power, you have to subtract B gap forward minus B gap backward and to continue calculating the power flow after getting the output power. Is it clear to that? Any question in this part? Okay. So here, if you would like to calculate B input, it's equal to B gap forward plus B gap backward plus B cover one. If you have also rotational loss, you can add this rotational. Uh, sorry, sorry, rotational loss is included in the gap power. So B gap forward plus B gap backward plus B cover at one. Also, you can calculate the total power as V terminal multiplied by I1 multiplied by the power factor, where power factor is equal to cosine the angle between terminal voltage and stator currents. So this is the uh, relation of uh, single phase reflection. بالنسبة للروتيشن اللوس هل هي في البيك في الفورورد ولا الباكورد؟ for the rotational loss. rotational loss the the physical meaning of rotational loss. rotational loss شباب is the friction loss is it right? so rotational loss it doesn't care about forward or backward because the friction will be the same. it doesn't matter. So friction loss is, is, is constant, is it right? Yes. We, we don't have uh, friction forward or friction backward, but we have big gap forward and big gap backward and torque forward and torque. The resultant torque, which is the total electric torque, will face some friction, which is the friction torque, and the resultant torque will be the output torque of the machine or shaft torque. So, there is no rotational forward loss or rotational backward loss. Rotational is rotational. It's friction. It doesn't matter about the forward or backward powers. Okay? Okay. Here is a numerical example, how to use the equivalent circuit and calculate the uh, response of the machine. But first we will start with the tests which are used to determine the machine parameters. I believe you have learned in the uh, 360 course how to identify the three phase induction motor parameters. Is it right? And you correct me if I'm not wrong. I, uh, I'm not aware completely with the syllabus of 360. What can I okay? Have you have you learned the parameter identification of three phase induction motor in 360 force? Uh, I don't remember actually. You remember something called no load test and the blocked rotor test? No, I don't test I don't know about that. Yeah. No, no. Uh, no load test and the blocked rotor test and the uh, DC test. Sorry, again? No load test and block the rotor test and applying DC voltage to get the resistance. Yes, we talked them, Victor. Okay, so you have learned this uh, test. Top simply, I will and describe it in a, I mean, quickly in, in this problem. Uh, for the machine test, for the machine equivalent circuit, and when you see here the equivalent circuit, what will happen if we start the motor at, uh, or, or, or I can discuss it on uh, the circuit of three phase. I will share the, uh, 
the whiteboard for a while. You know the equivalent circuit of the uh, three phase induction motor? So we have here XM, we have RC, we have stator resistance, we have reactance or, or, or uh, leakage reactance. The same also here, Vx2 prime, and this is R2 prime divided by S. This is the equivalent set of three phase induction mode. At no load issue, what is the speed at no load? Is it high or, or low speeds? It's high speed. Is it right? High speed. High speed. Yeah. So we expect S to be very small. Is it right? If S is small, the value of R2 prime divided S will be very high. This means the current which is going to move here will be very small. So we can assume that there is no current moving in this branch. In that way, we can assume that at no load, the equivalent circuit only will be like that. We can apply supply here and measure the current and also measure the power and we use some relations or analysis to calculate the equivalent impedance here. We can calculate R4, we can calculate XM, and R1 and X1 will be calculated previously using block rotor test and can be used here. So this is for no load. The other test, which is block rotor. At block rotor, it means NR equals zero. Is it right? In this test, we apply small voltage to the machine after reaching to the rate of current. So the current which will be absorbed is the same as rated current of the machine. Then uh, the machine will not start because we lock the rotor. So in the beginning, you have to you know, lock the rotor by any, any mechanical uh, thing like uh, something to, to stop the motor, even by your hand. And uh, apply the rotor, the, the supply voltage with a small value after reaching rated current. So, because n r equals zero, what will be the value of s? S will be unity. So, if s is very high, which is unity, at that time, the impedance here will be very small compared to the impedance of the branch of the magnetization because the current which is going to move here will be very small. So at blocked rotor test, we can consider that the circuit is like that. R2 prime, X2 prime, X1 and R1. R2 prime divide S and S is equal one. So this is the equivalent circuit for the blocked rotor test. This is for three phase induction machine. In our case here, In our case, in single phase shabab, the circuit is different a bit compared to three phase. So let's make the same analysis. Now, in case of uh, block, in case of block rotor, it means the rotor is stand still. The speed is zero. So if the speed is zero, this means the value of S will be uh, equal to one. Is it right? So 
considering this is the equivalent circuit here, if S is equal to one, so this branch impedance will be very small compared to that branch. Is it right? So we need to consider this branch when the speed is zero, right? For the other branch here, if S is one, this means two minus one, it's equal to one. So it will be the same like that branch. So we expect also the current here will be high compared to the current in that branch. So in the blocked rotor test, we can neglect the magnetization branch. So this is here what we are going to do during the blocked rotor test. So simply, the example here says the following test da data are obtained from a one fourth HV uh, uh, horsepower, single phase, 120 volt, 60 hertz, 1730 RPM induction motor, stator winding or main winding resistance is 2.9 ohms. If the motor here connected star or delta shuffle, question for you. Uh, single phase. It's single phase, no star or delta, is it right? Yes. So, so this value 120 represents what? Lanta neutral. Yeah, I mean, uh, someone else can start replying to the again. <laughs> يا شباب عقيل معايا ما هون كيف بتاع 120 فولت ريبريزنت وات دو وي نيد تو مالتيبلاي اور اور سب يعني ديفايد باي سكوير روت اوف 3 اور اني ثينج it's a single phase. We don't. It's single phase. We don't need to to do that. You see, so take care, Shabab, in the exam. Don't use any any root three multiply or divide. This machine is single phase. So this is a RMS value, okay? Line to neutral, exactly because we don't have three phases here. This is line to neutral volt, and this is the RMS value, sixty hertz, and so on. So now we have the uh, resistance of stator. So R1 is given. R1 equal to 0.9 ohms. However, X1 is not defined. So for the blocked rotor test, we have V blocked equal to 43 volt, as we described for blocked rotor. We apply small value of voltage up to reaching rated current. Here, it's stated that the block rotor current is, is 5 amps, and the power of the machine is 140 watts. This is the block rotor test. We have also some other data for the no-load test, voltage, current, and power. Type. Obtain the double revolving field equivalent circuit for the motor. In order to obtain this circuit, we need to calculate all of the machine parameters. So, and in another uh, and expression, we can say determine the machine uh, equivalent A circuit parameters. So we have R1, and we need to calculate the other uh, parameters. So we said at blocked rotor, this will be the equivalent circuit. The magnetization branch will be removed from the circuit at blocked rotor. So we have R2 prime, 0.5 and 0.5, and we have also X2 prime. So this is the total impedance here. So the power will be lost on R1 and R2. So R1, which is 2.9, plus R2 prime will be the uh, resistances that will have or dissipate the uh, cover loss. So we expect the uh, blocked rotor power, which is 140, equal to I squared multiplied by the sum of total resistance. So we can get the value of R2 prime from here. In order to get the value of X, we have X1 and we have also X2 prime. In order, in order to get the uh, reactive 
part of the impedance, we need first to calculate the absolute value of the impedance simply by dividing voltage by current. So, well, the by current will give you the total impedance of the circuit, which is equal to x1 plus x2 prime, this part and that part. So, we can say that z squared equal to r squared plus x squared. And you can get the value of x as x1 plus x2 prime. And simply, we can assume that x1 equal to x2 prime equal to x divided 2. So we can get the value of x2 prime. So for now, we could calculate the value of r2 prime, x2 prime, and x1 from the block draw to test. We still need to calculate the uh, magnetization reactance, XM, and this part can be calculated from the no load test. Simply for the no load test, if we return back again to the no load test here, no load test means S is very small. Is it right? If S is very small, so this means that this value of resistance will be very high compared to XM. So the current will prefer to move here in that part because the impedance here is very high. However, in the other branch here, if S is very small, which means that the denominator will be approximately equal to. This means the resistance here will not be very high, it's small, compared to the value of Xm. So we expect that the current is going to move in that direction. So for the no load test, the current will flow in this way. So simply, we have now a power voltage and the current absorb it to this circuit. So simply R1 plus half of R2 prime plus another resistance which represents the rotational loss. You know, at no load, the machine is moving. Machine is moving, which means there is a friction in the machine. And the equivalent circuit we have described has no parameter represent the rotational loss. So in, in no load and the block draw to test in order to determine the parameter, we have to, con to consider a resistance. This resistance uh, should represent the rotational loss of the machine. For that, we added here a resistance called R rotational. So the power is going to be dissipated on R1, R rotational, and 0.5 R two prime. So simply, by the same way, we can say that and this is what we have described. Point five R two divided S equal to point five R two prime plus 0.5 R2 prime multiplied by K. This is another uh, shape. And this is only in order to say that we have uh, cover and mechanical loss. So at no load, we can say power at no load equal to I square multiplied by R1 plus R rotational plus 0.5 R2, as we described. So we have the value of R1 and R2 prime. We can simply substitute here and we get the value of R rotational. Simply, R rotational equal to and we can get the R rotational by knowing R no load. So, you know, 2.9 and this is around 2.7. Uh, so, you can get the value of R rotation. Right. Here, we calculated the total resistance as R no load. In order to get the imaginary part, so by the same way, Z equal to V divided I, which is 120 divided 3.5 amps, which is equal to square root of 
R square plus X square. R square, which is the R no load, which is 10.2, and the imaginary part, which is represented here by 0.5 XM plus 0.5 X2 prime plus X1. So this is the imaginary part, 0.5 XM, X1 and X2, uh, 0.5 X2 uh, prime, and this is X1. So now we can get the value of XM from this relation. So simply, we could calculate the value of XM, and we would also the, uh, we can calculate from here the value of R rotational in order to calculate the rotational loss. After getting all parameters, you have to draw the circuit and both or, or uh, write down the values of each element. Number B, determine the rotational loss of the machine. Rotational loss simply can be calculated from the rotational resistance we already assumed. So we can say I square multiplied by I rotational will equal to the machine rotational loss. So simply we can say P equal to I square I square R1 plus 0.5 R2 prime plus P rotational. This is equal to the no load losses. Or simply, and you can calculate R no load from here and just multiply I square. And here, and in, the, in the example, we use the, all of the values in the no load test in order to calculate the value of P rotational. And simply, in the no load test, we said we have R1, R rotational, and 0.5 R2. So he said I square R1 plus I square multiplied by 0.5 R2 prime plus P rotational equal to no load loss. So it's the same. So this is the relation which I mean, is used to get the value of P rotational. Finally, we could find that P rotational equal to 72.94. And simply we could calculate uh, R rotational shabab from here. However, and there is a philosophy behind this solution. Here, the, the author of this book, and he do not, doesn't prefer to uh, uh, write down the value of R rotational because it's not a physical resistance in the circuit. So he just add this resistance to represent the rotational loss. For that, he prefer to calculate the rotational loss in order, and, and instead of calculating R rotational and then multiply I square by R rotational. So this is just to, a, to not be confused, to have a, a, a physical value of resistance for, for rotational loss. Right. Fadal? Uh, in this approximation, we have neglected the auxiliary winding and the capacitor. We, we, we said in the beginning of the analysis, we analyze the motor only using main winding because there are some motors or some techniques which depend on the starting only for the auxiliary winding. And during the operation, we have only the main winding. So we describe the model for a steady state operation because the starting is not included here. However, if you add a coil in the machine, to be inserted in the machine for all of time, you have to consider. Okay. Okay. Analysis or, or the any most well-known analysis for single phase induction motor in, in box. The assume the operation of something called the split phase induction motor. Okay, Shabab. Okay. Another example here. For the single phase induction motor of previous example, to remind the input power, the power factor, develop the power, uh, develop torque efficiency of the motor, air gap power, and rotor cover loss if the motor is running at rated speed when connected to 120 volt supply. So simply, Shabab, all of these are required at certain speeds. It's stated in the previous example, 
the speed was 1730. So in the beginning, like three phase induction motor, you need to define the slip and start using the equivalent circuit in order to calculate all of the power flow. So simply we will start with the slip. You know the NR 1730. And for this kind of motor, the synchronous speed, which is a very close one to the, the, the speed, which is 1730. So it's expected to have 1800 RPM. So the slip here is 0.039. Simply, you can substitute in the equations and calculate the value of Z forward and Z backward. Just substitute with the values. After getting Z forward and Z backward, you can get the uh, Z input of the machine, which is equal to sum of all resistance, R1, RF, RB, and sum of all reactances, X1, XF, and XB, to get the total impedance of the machine. Now, the current can be calculated as V divided by the uh, impedance and at the angle of the uh, negative sign of the impedance. So this represents the machine input currents. Simply, the power factor equal to cosine of this angle, which is here 0.61 lag. The input power can be simply calculated VI cosine theta. Take care. We shouldn't multiply by three because this is single phase machine. So 120 volt, 4.41 machine current, as we calculated here, 0.61 power factor. You can find that the input power is 322 watts. This is the machine input power. As you can see, it's a very small power. Okay, Shabab. After that, it's required to calculate the developed torque, the developed power, and so on. So we first calculate the omega s, which is 1800 multiplied by uh, 2 by divide 60, not equal 60. Sorry, I should have this moment. So this is now the synchronous speed. Then we can start using the relations to calculate the torque. This is a developed torque, which is equal to torque forward minus torque backward. So it's simply I squared RF minus RB divided by omega S. So this is a value of torque. Can you see the torque here is 1.28 Newton meter. This is a full load torque. Okay, so we need to calculate the gap power or, or uh, start with mechanical power. So simply mechanical power equal to torque omega multiplied by one minus S. We calculate the value of S, so simply we can calculate the value of B mechanical. So B mechanical can be calculated from the difference between powers, which are used in torque relation. The output power will equal to B mechanical minus P rotational. The rotational, we have calculated this one in the previous example. So we can use it here to get the value of uh, the power. This also should be minus, not equal. Okay, I will correct it in the slides. Right. So this should be uh, minus, not equal. So the output power now is uh, 158 watts. This is the output power. When we calculate the efficiency, can you imagine the efficiency is less than 50%? It's very small efficiency. And this is the case for single phase induction machines. As we described in the beginning, the problem in, in single phase machines, the current is small, so we use uh, small wires per section, which means the resistance will be high. So the copper loss is high and the efficiency will be very low. 
In order to calculate the gap power, we need to calculate B gap forward and B gap backward and sum all of them together. So B gap forward equal to I square R forward. Simply we can calculate B gap backward the same. And as you can see, B gap backward is very small compared to B gap forward. Okay. So the total B gap equal to this value, 264 watts. And the rotor core loss, cover, sorry, rotor cover loss can be calculated as B cover two, B, B2 or B cover two equal to B cover uh, forward, which is S multiplied by B gap forward, and added to two minus S multiplied by B gap backward. So this is the total cover, uh, sorry, rotor total cover loss. So this is all the, I mean, what we need in this problem. Any questions you have in that problem? So uh, simply today, we described the construction of single phase induction motor. We described the theory of the operation and the uh, power flow of the single phase induction motor. Next class, inshallah, we will study the different methods used to start the single phase induction motor. Thank you very much.